Welcome to episode two of Beacons 360, joined by Odera Jones, the Beacons Community Outreach and Engagement Coordinator. Thanks so much for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. So, Dara, you have one of those fun jobs that a lot of people on campus and a lot of the fans and alumni don't really know what's going on. You're in charge of all the community service that goes on with our student athletes, but also some of the groups that come in. Um, and you've done such a tremendous job growing everything over the past couple of years. Can you just sort of talk about your vision for what you want out of our student athletes and some of the groups coming in? Um, we want our student athletes to kind of reflect and um, understand what the University of Massachusetts Boston is all about, but at the same time, give them experiences outside of the classroom. Uh, we have a lot of kids that come in from different states and different regions that only know Boston as the Red Sox or the Celtics or the Patriots. Um, my job is to show them the rest of, the Bo of what Boston is and get them to learn about the history of the, of the city. One of the really cool things you guys did last year, sort of adding on, was creating a partnership with Pine Street Inn a homeless shelter that's very well known within the city of Boston. And UMass Boston became the first athletics department to create a year-long partnership, which you renewed in May. Um, what were some of the things you heard from our student athletes about that experience and hearing back from Pine Street Inn about the experience working with UMass Boston? Uh, Pine Street Inn loved working with our student athletes. I mean, our student athletes um, have always been a group that has been engaged. Uh, so having them go to the Pine Street Inn and kind of learn about um, the battle of homelessness, how it's kind of, it kind of affects everyone. There's no real way um, to help without actually seeing what it is. Uh, so we had our student athletes, all of our teams had a chance to go to the Pine Street Inn, um, help cook food, help talk to the, uh, some of the homeless guys, learn about what the Pine Street Inn does. And it, it was a great partnership. I'm, I'm glad we're gonna be back there again this year. What are some of the projects that are coming up soon or that you guys have added that you're really excited for for this 2016-17 academic year? I mean, this year it's not, it's not um, about adding more. It's about kind of being more successful in some of the things that we've, we've done. Uh, we have a great opportunity with the Pine Street Inn. We also have the DA uh, District Attorney's Basketball Tournament that we host here. So it's just making those uh, events and our exposure for our student athletes a lot better. So it's not, we're not going to be adding so much this year. It's just honing in and making those things better. Another really cool aspect of your job is sort of bringing in some of those outside groups that student athletes and fans might not even know come in and use the facilities when teams aren't using them. Um, you've had some really big AU tournaments. Coach Calipari shown up in the past out of the University of Kentucky. What is it about bringing these big groups in terms of showing off UMass Boston um, that helps out the university, not just in well, maybe fundraising for the department, but sort of showing off how far this university has come over the past five, 10 years? Well, I think this, uh, the university has come a long way. Not many people know that. Uh, it, it, I've heard a lot of times uh, groups come over and they say, wow, I didn't know you guys had all this. A lot of it is just creating the exposure for the university. Um, kind of getting more eyes on our programs, on our facilities, and all the good people that we have here. So most importantly, we want to make sure we keep on doing that and at the same time show people that UMass Boston can be a school for them. Uh, there's a lot of kids within the city of Boston that have never been to UMass Boston. There's a lot of kids that are from other states that have never been to UMass Boston. So these, these events give us an opportunity to show who we kind of really are. Well, thanks so much for your time. That was Jared Jones. After the break, we'll be joined by women's hockey coach Lindsey Berman.
I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I was literally able to transform my life because of the University of Massachusetts, and I want that for every single student that walks through the door. We are here with Lindsay Berman, the head coach of the women's ice hockey team. First coach, you guys won the first ever championship and uh, women's ice hockey team history. Uh, how do you get back to uh, the championship caliber team? Yeah, well, I'm a big believer in not uh, fixing what's not broken. So um, I'd like to start exactly how we did last year with not even thinking about that. But, um, you know, at some point we'll have to get off that high um, and really appreciate what we had, but just move on and start from scratch. So this summer, uh, two of your players, Alexandra Carlos and Jenny Curry, uh, got drafted from a professional team around here, the Boston Blades. Uh, can you kind of talk on that accomplishment a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, it's huge for them and uh, really happy for both of them to, to be recognized by a professional team. And um, I think it puts us on the map and shows that we have some really good hockey players and good people here. Um, but it's great. It's great for them. It's a great accomplishment and uh, we can't wait to watch them. So last year you were the interim head coach. Uh, you were named that in August. And this year after you guys won the championship, you were moved to full-time. How did that really help uh, your preparation for this season? Um, yeah, I'd say it helped. Um, I never really considered an interim. I, I always wanted to be fully here, um, so I, I really didn't think about it. But um, it was obviously nice to be given that title after the year with, that we had and um, really let me focus on moving forward. So we already talked about the two seniors that got drafted uh, this summer. Uh, you guys lost six seniors in total last year. What returner really needs to step up so you guys have a, a good season just like last year? Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to put pressure on anyone in particular, but uh, I just had a meeting with our junior captain, Marin Brown, and expect a breakout year from her. Um, our senior defenseman, Kat Armstrong, expecting a breakout year from her as well. She improved over the last three years, but um, we're going to really look to our, our 11 new faces in addition to all of our returners to, to really step it up and bring it this year. So right now we're going to take a look at uh, the – schedule for you guys this year and um, you guys start off your year with a uh, Pennsylvania trip mm -hmm. um, can you kind of talk about that a little bit um, and what that is gonna be like starting off the year with that sure I, I love starting off with a road trip I think it's really good for team bonding and it's it's fun for them to get to experience a new city we haven't taken a trip to Philly I don't think ever so uh, but yeah we'll be playing Stevenson who had a great year last year and a highly respectable team and we haven't played them in a couple of years, so we're looking forward to that. And then we're playing uh, Lebanon Valley, who's a new program, and uh, really looking forward to seeing what they have to bring, too. So. Well, thank you, Coach, for uh, everything, and good luck this year. Thank you. I came from a working-class family. I grew up in a hard-edge section of Lowell, Massachusetts, and uh, I lived with my six siblings and my parents in a four-bedroom house that had one bathroom. I knew that the only way that I was going to uh, get to where I wanted to get to was if I got a high quality college education and I had the University of Massachusetts right in my hometown. It made a difference. I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I think with that comes a special responsibility as a steward, as a protector. Every student that I see that walks through the door I mean, I see myself, I was exactly where they are now. I had their same challenges, their same aspirations, their same dreams. And it makes me want to fight for them. It makes me want to make sure that they get every opportunity that I got. I was literally able to transform my life because of the University of Massachusetts, and I want that for every single student that walks through the door. We're going to flip the script right now, and I'm going to interview Steve, who outside of his very many talents here on camera and on air. He's also a pretty good baseball pitcher in his own right. Steve, you spent the summer up in Cortland, New York. You were an all-star. You were the pitcher of the year for the Cortland Crush up in the NY CBL. Can you tell me a bit about that experience, not only getting to have a great summer yourself, but being there with three teammates um, and, and winning a regular season championship? Exactly. I mean, uh, this summer was nothing short of amazing. Uh, I went up with Josh Lopez, Anthony Searles, and David Murphy. A uh, great group of guys, and Corland, uh, a little skeptical at first because upstate New York, but it was a great place, and it was a great family. Uh, the coach, Bill McConnell, 
one of the greatest guys I've ever met and ever played for. Um, he's a great person, um, not only as a coach, but he does care about um, you as an individual. So it was, it was uh, nothing short of amazing, like I just said, and it was, it was a good time. One of the tough things about being a student athlete is in season, you have so many other focuses. This is the second straight summer that you've not only played summer ball, but had a really successful summer. How much does that help you heading into fall ball, which has already started here on campus, it's crazy to say, um, but keeping yourself involved 365 days a year and, and ready to go for the upcoming season? Yeah, baseball is a different sport. I mean, it's really all year round. Uh, and it's such a short season when it comes to spring baseball here. So it's kind of just kind of honing your skills and kind of coming back stronger than ever, uh, especially with the run we had last year. Uh, it should be exciting for this year. Did you have a favorite moment this summer? Uh, favorite moments. Uh, I, I have a lot of moments. Um, I mean, obviously. But starting the All-Star game was pretty cool. Uh, that was probably my favorite moment of uh, Corlands. It was just, just such a cool atmosphere and it was it was fun to play um, up there. So, Well, you're also very involved on campus. You're the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Just started under that role. What are you looking to accomplish this year with SAC? Uh, I'm trying to, we're trying to really uh, kind of be a spokesperson for the athletes here at UMass Boston. Um, I mean, if someone has a problem or they want to see something get done, uh, we're really trying to uh, kind of reach within the campus um, and connect the athletes with the campus. So it should be exciting to see what we re we have been productive in the first month and kind of planning out what we are doing for the whole year. So I think that uh, as a SAC member, I think this has been the most productive we've been in the first month. What are some of your goals this year, some of the big events you guys are looking to sponsor and put together? So right now we are in the first semester, we're kind of trying to have a, um, a raffle uh, calendar and try to sell some uh, calendars out for fundraising. And in the second semester, we were kind of talking about maybe a dodgeball tournament, which would be exciting. And obviously uh, competitiveness is always around here in Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. So we'll turn to Beacons Baseball. Obviously a phenomenal season, the first ever at-large bid in program history, a 30-win season, and a couple wins in the regional tournament. Uh, fall ball starting last week. What are some of the early sentiments coming out of there? A lot of new faces already out there at Monon Park. A lot of new faces, but a lot of seniors. Uh, you have Anthony Searles, Dan Mantoni, David Murphy, a lot of seniors, and Luke Nagel, that uh, are really great leaders. So they're kind of just trying to mold the new kids uh, to the Beacons baseball program, how we do it here, and uh, looking for a championship this year. This is the first year you've had a chance to play fall ball over at Monin Park, such a gorgeous facility. How much has that changed already, fall ball, and sort of the, the practice schedule and maybe the ability to do a few more things over at Monin? Yeah, I mean, just getting live reads off uh, the outfield so big. So our outfielders are kind of working with uh, how to read the balls and how to work in the outfield because it's so big and it's such an odd park. Um, but it does give us a lot more space to do pitchers do their own thing, hitters do their own thing instead of King Field where it was half the time it was flooded. Well, that was an interview with Steve Witkowski. We'll be back after the commercial break with our play of the week right here on Beacons 360. UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus I saw that there was a lot of diversity, there's a lot of people. Um, here there's a lot of international students so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Murphy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. We're sisters. We're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community. So each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences, we have an internship at the end or it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out, like telling you which classes to choose. And welcome back to Beacons 360. It's our final segment of this, our second ever episode. It's our play of the week. This week, it was a pretty easy choice. A historic moment happened at the Clark on Saturday. Julian Murphy, the fourth player in program history 
to ever reach a thousand kills and not only that she did it in a huge win for the beacons steve you were there you were doing the public address announcing talk about the moment and just how big of a win that was for julian murphy and this beacons volleyball team well i'll tell you what they just dominated this game it was three sets to nothing and they absolutely just came out with the right hook uh it you can see in this right here that julian murphy just put a little power on it and just got in there for the Beacons point. Murphy, a phenomenal season this year, hitting well over 350, tops on the team, tops in the conference, and the Beacons will have three big tests this week. They host Tufts tomorrow, an undefeated team out of the NESCAC. You can check it out on littleeast.tv and the Beacons Broadcast Network if you can make it to Clark. And then a big road game on Thursday against an MIT team that was tops in New England last season and a big home match in conference play on Saturday at 1 p.m. against Eastern Connecticut State. You can find all that and more on the Beacons Broadcast Network. We'll be back next week on Beacons 360. We've got a couple of great interviews, but first we'll give some credit to our staff doing a great job today. My name is Seth Orensky, your producer and host, joined by Steve Witkowski pulling double duty today. And, of course, we have to thank Anthony Searles, Alex Carasoto, and David Wahlberg, our great staff behind the curtain. Stay classy, Beaconville.